Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 54 of Whitling's Prototype. <clears throat> I think today the plan is we're going to do some main menu selection work. So we got our main menu cube spinning around. We've got our little titles saying, hey, this is the thing. Um, but I think first order of business is to programmatically decide which one of these items the user has selected, which one's in the center. And then when they hit some key or maybe even click, we might even do some highlighting. Uh, we might do a little polish. I don't think it will take too long to get this part working. <clears throat> um, so handle begin rotate. Hmm. <laughs> Let's think about what we want to do. <clears throat> We've got our click and spins that moves the cube around, changes the option or the selection of the main menu. Maybe when we click on it, it should go to that scene. Unfortunately, at the current moment, we don't have any other scenes to go to. We have our play scene, so. Let's just use a print at first to test where we're going, right? Um, handle begin rotate, and I actually think that we'll do this, we'll make this a to-do. Um, this should probably happen in the rotate complete, right? Um, let's get rid of some of these things that we don't care about. Oops. Oh, and that's actually in Rotator. I just closed that on Rotate Complete. And in Cube Core, <clears throat> in probably Awake, and we'll Rotate Complete, what do you do? Hide and active faces, validate all path nodes. <clears throat> that is not necessary in our main menu cube. So, let's get rid of it, right? And then we'll add our own personal handle rotate complete. And we could calculate this in the begin rotate. I see nothing wrong with that. Closest face, furthest face. <clears throat> I'm just going to calculate the closest face in our handle begin rotate for now. So we've already gotten menu cube faces. Uh, we're going to need to add those components to our main menu cube faces, right? So our up face here, and I'm going to go into our main menu cube face and change this from a scene to a string. Main menu cube face. And then when this happens, we're just going to print entering scene. And uh, one thing that I'm not quite have I haven't decided on is how I'm going to do scene transitions. <clears throat> I mean, do I want it to all be one giant scene with big prefabs? I'm not too sure. Uh, but Unity does allow the additive loading of scenes, which I think I might take advantage of. That seems like a nice middle ground solution, right? Let's see, is this going? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, let's drop our up face. 
everything but back face is going to need a cube face. And up face is achievements. Right face is options. Down face is quit. That's not actually entering a scene. It's going to be a special <clears throat> credits. And forward face is none. So now in our main menu cube, in awake, this should find six main menu cube faces. Oops. And I know I've been swapping back and forth between face index and eye face. Um, I think I'll I'll just use face index. It's easier to read for me. Eye face is easier to type, but it doesn't really stick with the coding standard that I'm really going for. Um, cube face. Menu cube faces. And we'll say closest distance to camera. And we'll start that out as float.positive infinity. Do, 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 and this is a menu cube face, main menu cube face. And we'll even be so bold as to call it current face. We'll go from the camera position to the current face transform position. <clears throat> and this is a classic um, I don't know what you would call this. Classic pattern. Finding something that's the closest or furthest from another thing. Closest distance to camera is equal to distance to camera. And then we've got our Closest face is equal to current face. And our main menu input should be connected to, says our menu face. So our main menu cube. So we can tell the menu input um, what the selected menu face is. And this is currently private, so let's make a mutator. That is a main menu cube face, selected, selected menu face equals selected. There we go. So we've got our mutator. Um, <clears throat> that means when the rotate is complete, well, let's link it up first. I always forget that. Um, so our main menu cube needs a reference to the main menu input. There we go. And then, um, Menu input dot set selected menu face closest face. 
That way, in our main menu input, when we're looking for return, selected menu face, enter. Solid. Oh, dang it, this is going to go. Yep. <clears throat> It actually wasn't going to transfer, but there would have been no test scene name, right? Entering play. Entering options. Achievements. Let's turn off collapse. There we go, play. Quit. Credits. Awesome. So now our cube knows exactly which face to which face is connected to which scene or which prefab or whatever we decide to do. I think I can turn off the um, draw debug stuff that's going on with our main menu input and maybe even clean up some of this stuff too. Um, we don't need the sweeping anymore. I like keeping rotate completed. That's fine. Let's collapse these guys. Entering scene. Do, 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 do. Found six menu cube faces. Sure. Yeah, we don't need this either. Cool. Next on the list. <clears throat> I guess tap selection instead of hitting enter on the keyboard because I am designing this to be mobile mainly. Um, I mean, maybe what I could do is So this is our back face. This is our play menu text. It does have a mesh renderer. Um, background quad. Maybe what I could do is add um, a box collider. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a script on this quad, so when a user clicks on it or taps on it, um, it will talk to the back face, check to see if that face is active, and if the face is active, then we can tell the face to highlight the text. Ooh, but then we'll need to unhighlight it when we spin. It's more of a user experience type thing. I don't know how much I care about that right now. It's an interesting problem to solve, but I don't think it's high on the list. What is high on the list? I mean, let's go to level one. <clears throat> Eventually, I would like a, a like overworld where you select the level that you're going to play. But hmm. That's a pretty cool idea. <clears throat> um, where's our to-do? Possible features. Um. 
I like the idea where the overworld <clears throat> is itself shaped like a level. Um, each face is its own level, and then um, we could say at higher difficulties there will be multiple exits depending on the exit taken the overworld cube will rotate and that will allow the users to sort of you know, we'll start off with a simple one cube overworld. They're just going from one thing to another. Maybe not even one cube, just like a straight line. Don't even make it 3D yet. Um, and then eventually you'll have like a somewhat more complex level as the overworld and you'll have to make decisions. It's like, oh, when I'm trying to beat this level, do I want the cube to spin to the right? Or do I want it to spin to the left? Hmm. I don't know. It's an interesting idea. That's getting a little bit wild there. Um, but for now, let's just go from play to the first level. And let's see how, how good my level making... Call this level 01. Definitely save options. Um, we'll do our lighting settings. Skybox. Boom. And then we'll delete this main camera. And the directional light. And we'll put in our core level objects. And I guess let's just do three cubes. Don't I have begin cubes somewhere? I do. That means I should have an end cube. I don't. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <clears throat> um, let's duplicate you, make you an end cube. Oh, and all these cubes, we don't have these set. Okay. I hope this doesn't break everything. Um, so this one is a fast to slow curve, the point three time. And this one is a wiggly woggly fail with the point three. So these two cubes worked. Begin cube didn't. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's do that. That's important. So this is our main cube. Uh, special cubes. Can rotate false. And I'm actually going to leave the begin cube with no sliders. I mean, with no transitions. So it's like... <clears throat> These other cubes, it's like, oh, I tried to rotate them and something was wrong. But begin and end, for now, cannot rotate them. So 
So our face container, up face, start end, path node, start node, start path node. Cool. End cube. I'm going to take up and rotate it 180 degrees. There we go. And then our up face end node. Is it a goal node? Goal. There we go. <coughs> uh oh. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I haven't done anything with goals yet. Hey, Thunderbutt. Okay. That could be a pathing problem. Okay, so now we have our end cube prefab. I don't think anything needs to change with that. So up is going to be straight. And then this guy's up. See, that's a problem because when I update faces, I lose the prefab connection. I mean, I could write a tool to hack around that just by editing the meta files. Sounds fun and dangerous. What are your warnings here? Assign, but not mesh extruder, cube controller, sure. Let's keep both of those in there. <clears throat> And we'll do up is none. And then this is actually going to be back. Is that correct? Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Um, our core level objects. Main camera. Does this need a... Camera light. Where does that live? Cube controller. No. Forgot about my random pools. L O L. Start node. So our cube manager needs a start node. Oop. Start. Camera controller, I thought so. Do you live on the camera? Yes, I am dumb. Okay, start target is begin cube. That's okay. Yep. Set next was given a path node that has no tag. What link entered a new face that has untagged path nodes? Okay. So I believe that's in Whitling movement. Um, let's search for goal. Overlapped get is goal. Where do we put that? This is a boolean on the path node. Oh, really? I didn't even see that. Cool. Need a burrito. End node is goal. And then this is actually an end path node. Okay, so I already solved this problem. Egg salad. A Whitling miraculously escaped. A 
kind of like this really high zoom in level here. Where did my straight do? There we go. Dang, some. Interesting. When I'm zoomed in, it takes me a lot more to spin the cube. But when I'm zoomed out, it takes me very little. Hmm. Wait a minute. Where did you disappear, buddy? Dang it. That's not correct. Halfway. No, that's not what I want. Um... Where is Whitling Movement Goal? On trigger, enter, hit path node. Whitling miraculously escaped, destroy this game object, return. That's weird. Did I? This is the start node. I picked the end node. Silly, silly. Why? That's not correct at all. I guess they can go back and forth. Nobody's coming from the end. I'm going to rename those. That makes me feel bad on the inside. <laughs> End node, and the end node is the goal. Let's try this again. There we go. Oh, nice! Calculate direction. Who called you? Start pathing new face. Come on, Thunderbutt. Do you have to do that now? It's like you wait until I start recording to clean yourself. Okay, um... It makes it so hard to think. Come on, stop it, lady. Please. Please. Okay, maybe if I just talk loudly enough, I won't be able to hear the sounds that she likes to make. <laughs> so, the goal is, or the problem is, when we hit the end cube, uh, before the Whitling miraculously escaped, we got a null reference exception. So, that means, wait, on trigger enter, get is goal. That doesn't make any sense. Because, why would we be calculating the new direction if there's already a goal? Ah, which one did this come from? That's the question. 196. <clears throat> Start pathing new face. Right? And then this came from on trigger enter. Oh, huh. we should have returned here.
That should have exited the function. So it's saying, that the target node is null. Okay. If error, don't error. Awful solution. But I do believe it should be OK because this is at the end, right? This isn't something that's going to be happening in the middle of the level. Oh, now he disappeared early again. End node is the goal. Start node. It says next is none. Oh, starts. Next is end, previous is none. There we go, ends, previous is start, and next is none. So that actually could have been the part of the problem. Yeah, cool. Let's um, try to remove that null check now. <laughs> Will you break? Maybe I'm gonna guess no. Ah, yes. Okay, it's little victories. Cool. So we've got our level. Um, what next? Now we need to transition into this level. And the transitions are something that I'm really not sure about. Um, so let's go try and figure it out. I need a slightly bigger desk. So, we've got our menu, and that has our menu cube. I would prefer that the transitions be seamless, right? That's always very cool looking. Makes something look professional and flashy. You don't just want it to snap to that place. Um, and our menu cube, I believe, is at the origin. And this is where the problem kind of comes in. It's that, um, or is it a problem? Well, we've got two options that I was considering. I've always liked the zoom in. <clears throat> so like if this was the cube, the camera would zoom and go inside of it and then give the illusion that it kept zooming as the level grew. So the level and the cube are still in the same place, but it looks like the camera flew into the cube and then zoom down in on the level. Uh, this would also make it super cool if I did the overworld thing, because that'd be kind of like an Inception style, oh, one level deeper, you know, that kind of thing, which sounds kind of fun. Oh, am I, is anyone chatting? Nope, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Just be safe in case anybody wants to show up. So we've got our zoom in. Um, we could also just translate away. We could do a fade in and out. Uh, 
Um, and this actually works for not just levels, but other menus as well. So if I went to the options menu, maybe it could zoom into the cube, display you with some other cubes to move around, and then when you're done, it would back out. That's another thing. We'd have to do a zoom in out. So I'm really not sure what to do. I'm not sure if this is something that's important, the transitioning between levels. <clears throat> it's kind of cool. Right now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, okay, what is actually do I need for this prototype? Um, and then when do I start beginning production where it's like, okay, cool, let's make some, let's actually start making this for realsies. I really like the idea of the zoom in and out. I think that's super cool. <sighs> oh even cooler is we could cheat that right <clears throat> because i'm thinking of oh i've got this camera here and then i've got my cube and then i move the camera into the cube but then the the camera is like right up at zero zero it's inside of this cube and that's not really what we want but I believe that we can, well, we should probably test this out, right? Um, if we scale the cube up in all directions and move the cube towards the camera, I believe that would give the same illusion as if we're going into it. And then the camera is still at the right position. Then we can start the level off really, really tiny and then scale it up to one. And everybody's happy. That sounds pretty darn cool. I'm going to try that. I don't know if we'll finish it today. It sounds simple, but that is a horrifying thing to think. Anytime you think it sounds simple, get ready for the pain. Uh, let's save this level. And we'll go back to our... Do, 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 do. Where is that? Scenes. Main menu. And our back face is going to be linked to... Level 01. This is also going to make it really nice for us. Um, I mean, our life is going to be a lot easier if all of the art, everything that's visible in the level, not the canvas. We don't want to be zooming and scaling the canvas. Just all of the stuff that's in the world is a child of a single game object, right? Because then we can just scale that single game object and life will be good. <clears throat> let's see. Um, let's go to our cube face and we'll add a conditional here. We'll say if transition to scene does not equal null. Oops, control KU. And then we're also going to need to add level 01 to our build settings. There we go. 
Um, so, boom, we hit enter on play. We say it's time to select this option. Then we're going to need to, who's gonna be in charge of that? Is it the camera? Oh, the camera doesn't need to do it at all. Um, let's create an empty game object, reset the position, and we will call this world. And the world contains the main menu cube at the origin. Excellent. Um, and I guess we'll just need a world component, like a world scale, world scale in out, world scale up down. Scripts, this does not actually in menu, not really in camera either. I'll put it out here for now. So I can find a better home for it. World scale up down. No, it's only up. World scale transition. One of these days. I'm gonna fix that extra bit. How much time we got? Coming up on it. Um, so our world scale transition. Every world can scale in and out. Ooh, that's a problem. That's a big old problem. So in our level, We've got our player looking at the cube uh, on a horizontal angle, but in the first level, we've got him looking down, you know, at the tops of the cubes. So maybe we're gonna need to do a camera lerp here as well. I mean, all we're gonna do is lerp the rotation, but that would mean that, see this adds it to another problem. Oh dear, yeah. We've got positioning too. So if the if the player was like way over here on some weird level, we kind of need the camera to be looking back at the first cube on the level. In theory, we could spawn the first cube out here, but we want all of our cubes to be on unit boundaries. And so if this is like the unit grid in two dimensions, we don't want a cube right here. We want all of our cubes to be on these boundaries. So the zoom in and out, like I said, I thought it would be easy, but there's a lot more factors at play here. But it would look so cool, I think. In my mind, it looks very cool. I just need to find a way to test it. So, let's think about this. Um, simple test cases. What are the smallest steps that I can take to see this in action and decide whether or not it's cool? <clears throat> because it could suck, right? 
and I want to I want to see if it sucks quickly. Um, so we'll just do adjust zoom. Um, after that, we'll do zoom and rotate. And then I guess we'll do zoom, rotate, translate. It should be okay with the skybox. I think it'll be okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, let's do the zoom. Um, oh, hey, oh, hey. Transform ease. This is going to be the zoom in. And of course, we have to do it all backwards, too. Um, but let's just try forwards first. So when this world scale transition happens, I am going to <clears throat> let's draw a timeline of this. So, um, start transition. Um, this is going to be the exiting world. Scale up. And I guess halfway through will add scene. And then at this point, maybe three quarters of the way through this um, destroy the old scene. And then here, new scene is at scale of one. So we've actually got two lerps going on here. We've got this one where the scene we're exiting. And then we've got this one with the scene that we're entering. So let's break it down even further, one small step at a time. Let's just get this world to get big. Here's our world. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. And I want this to go slow and then fast, right? Um, duration, one second. Nice and simple. I do believe that our touch input, no, main menu input, is going to need a reference to our world to tell it to start transition. Hmm. Um, and then do to do, 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 do selected menu face. I actually don't think I need to call this here because it's going to be our world that's in charge of this. Um, world transition dot begin, and we will pass it the selected menu face.
main menu cube face. Yeah, each cube face um, has a transition to scene. Get an accessor. Public object um, get transition um, get next scene. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Zoom in, dot begin, ease. Don't think we're going to need to do anything here. <laughs> we are going to need to write the update, correct? It's been so long since I've used this. Set duration. Do to do, do, get is easing. On update, on end. Sure, yeah, we have to set up those delegates first. Beginning to ease, um, nothing too special. Target scale. Um, <laughs> zoom in. Exiting world, um, leaving world, zoom in, update, not a great name, but I'll use it. I do believe that on update ease is a transform ease update delegate. I'm assuming that means it takes in a float ratio. There we go. And because this is all on a single game object, the container of everything, I can just manually modify. Oh. Um, <laughs> we're going to need a start scale as well, because remember we blew up our menu cube to a silly size for testing. Let me get this a vector three. What was I doing? Should I just disallow different sizes? Like, okay, this is going to be a little bit gross. Heck, um, this is restricting all cubes to have equal scalar dimensions.
Is there like a float dot near? Hmm. Come on, Thunderbutt, just wait five more minutes, please. I beg of you. Okay. I'll just log an error saying um world container oh dang the world container is going to be 111 <laughs> um world container is abnormally scaled well i already typed it out i'm not going to get rid of this begin ease okay so we're updating from ratio. Zero is going to be start. One is going to be end. And I think that's in math. Dot Alert. I'm going from start scale to target scale by ratio. A new scale. Um, and let's do a quick zoom in complete. Copy this to the clipboard so I don't have to type it three times. Oh boy, let's see how this goes. Um, main menu input, we need a world transition. There you go. World transition, you need some data. Target scale 10. Sure. We'll see what you got. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Um really. That would be in our main menu inputs. World transition begin. This might go a few minutes over. I just want to see the zoom, see how it looks, and then we can, you know, take it apart a little bit more thoroughly tomorrow. Oh, there we go. Step in. Ten. Oh, did I just not ever call? Zoom in update in the update. <laughs> well, that makes me feel a little bit better. Okay. There we go. Big money. Oh, enter and exit. Sure. Um, 
50. Is there any way I can get it so big that it takes up the whole camera? No. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely going to have to move the world to the camera. No. Oh. Uh, where are you, camera? Wow, it's like right there. But if I slide the world. Well, this is all kinds of broken. <laughs> um, let's look at it one more time. If we can get it to disappear after a certain point, that's definitely too fast, but, um, yeah, I think this is worth continuing. So that's it for me today, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for episode number 55.